Hey guys, we made it to Mexico. Just kidding. It's 50 degrees. This is China Caves, Susha Island. It's really cool. And I'm all alone. The weather's really starting to change. It's kind of starting to feel like spring. And it's so nice today. Like, obviously beautiful sun, no wind. And it really just kind of changes the whole, the whole feel of everything. I'm in this just kind of like little cave overhanging rock thing. And there's a bunch of all these rocks that are just kind of, you know, it's like a sedimentary rock. And then there's this, which sure looks just like charred wood. Ah, it's so weird. It's just like set into the rock like this. Never seen that. Need a geologist or something to explain what the heck that is. These rocks are super cool. Susha, uh, the second day in our new anchorage, and we caught a beautiful sunset last night. It got really cold. Then we had a little bit of an actually quite rolly night, but let me tell you, it turned out to be the most amazing day. So there's two firsts that happened today. Number one is I held my first coaching call from like an anchorage in the middle of you know, of nowhere, really, as compared to, you know, tied to a dock in a marina where I've uh, held them previously. So that's good. That's a, that's like a little bit of a vote of um, confidence and being able to, you know, do that on the regular here out at sea. The other first today is that it's so damn sunny and nice that it's like shorts weather, tank top weather. Okay. Okay. It's in the sun, the air, like when you're down here, it's actually kind of cold, but when you're out in the sun, the sun is actually really warm and it is such a beautiful day. There's no breeze. Man, this just gets me like so excited for when this is just all the time. Uh, but our first our first day like this is here, so. Are you gonna go paddle boarding? Um, I don't know, I'm gonna go anywhere, but I'm gonna get on the paddle board. Look at you, bare feet, yeah. shorts, t-shirt, penny. It's slightly too cold for what I'm wearing, but <laughs> it's not bad. Like I'm not, I'm not uncomfortable really. Nope. You guys stay here. Sorry. Someday we'll get you out on this thing, but not yet. The mountains are out. Look at that. Look at those guys. Gorgeous. The dogs have their little bed set up on deck. I've got a little workstation set up. Mike's gonna do this. In other news, we were just talking about Mike going paddle boarding and he was trying to figure out what he should wear, if he should wear a bathing suit or if he should wear a wetsuit. And I couldn't figure out the name. I couldn't think of the word wetsuit. So I called it, um, what did I call it? Scuba pajamas. Scuba pajamas. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. Actually, if you think about it, they kind of are scuba pajamas, so you can take that and do with it what you will. That's actually, believe it or not, Lucy, that's super annoying.
figured out the diesel situation. Yeah, what happened? Uh, it's it's confusing and hard to explain. The you know, we have two diesel tanks, and we have two things that use diesel on the boat. One, of course, is the main engine, and the other is a diesel furnace. What we found out the hard way yesterday when we we saw a diesel fuel kind of spitting out the vent for tank one. The vents. The air vents. The air vents. Off the side of the boat. Yeah. We were motoring along and noticed that there was just fuel kind of spitting out the, the vent for tank one. Didn't know why. So I spent all afternoon yesterday kind of troubleshooting that. I figured out that... So they plumbed the furnace to always draw fuel out of tank two no matter what you do with the selectors. But what they screwed up was they plumbed the, re so the furnace also has a return line. They plumbed the return line into the return selector so that it'll return fuel to whichever one you have selected. But the supply is always gonna be tanked two, no matter what. So we, since March 1st, uh, I had switched the selectors to tank one uh, and the tank was full. So since March 1st, the furnace has been drawing diesel out of tank two and returning it to tank one. Uh, the, the, nice. The, <laughs> and tank one is full. So what I figured out was tank one was overflowing because of the way the furnace is plumbed. Like, and has been overflowing. Probably. For the last three weeks. Yeah, could, I mean, we don't, yeah, we haven't noticed it, but... I'm sure it's been overflowing at various times. So that was an important thing to learn about our boat. Very important. And sorry to the ocean for... Yeah, I don't feel, I don't feel good about that. ...pouring diesel in without knowing. So that problem is solved. We did also hit our very first lobster trap, or crab trap, whatever they are here. Um, they are everywhere. It's a minefield out here in some of these waters. There's just these floating buoys that run a line all the way down to a crab trap that's sitting on the floor. Um, and they're everywhere and they're really honestly easy to miss. And we plowed right through one yesterday. It was loud. It was, I was down here actually, you were driving and it was a really scary sound. It was very, very loud and aggressive and I came running up and looked over the back and then we kind of like spit out like it was like mulch we made mulch of one of these buoys another concern is everything sounds fine but the concern is if some of the line that you know that I'd attached the buoy is possibly wrapped around our propeller shaft really the way that you're meant to check this is to dive on the boat to go down underneath so it might be time for mike to put on his scuba pajamas and go take a look down underneath the boat so we'll keep you posted on that front and here's the third thing that we found out yesterday last night well let's back up our toilet flushes by taking in when you pump it it takes in seawater and it'll go into our holding tank. Well, last night, it was dark in here, and I was flushing the toilet right before bed, and it was like a neon light show. It was like a laser show in the toilet bowl, because apparently we had sucked up a whole bunch of bioluminescence, um, and we were like circling down the toilet bowl. I do feel terribly for these poor little phytoplankton who now have to live out their fate in like a, in a holding tank. They're like fairies, and we're just putting them in a vat of sewage, but it's super cool to watch them go there, so. Anyway, yesterday was a kind of a eventful day with those three things, so. One scary thing with the diesel, another scary thing with hitting a crab pot, and a very cool magical thing with flushing the toilet here. So, it's only gonna get more magical, I'm sure, as the summer uh, approaches, so I'm really excited for flushing the toilet in the summer. <laughs> Friday Harbor and there's supposed to be some pretty serious wind that's starting here actually pretty soon uh, really peaking tomorrow and really just lasting for like two days like gale force but we talked about it we talked about it, we talked about it, and we decided to actually go into the marina here we're anchored right now but um, none of neither of us are that excited about going and spending 
more time at a marina, but we just decided since it's Thursday, it's almost the weekend again, we're just gonna head in and kind of, you know, catch up on more chores and ride out this massive storm. So anyway, we are just getting everything ready to just head right over there. We're not going very far. That's the marina. So we actually did have a pretty mellow night here, which was fine, and the wind has definitely arrived. We are rolling around pretty, pretty much a lot. Very heavy much right now. Um, we got some things sloshing around in the sink. There's also boat wakes that come through, so we kind of like, we do the sloppy swish. Mokiki does the sloppy swish. <laughs> Look at him move! It's very rolly in here. So it's just been kind of like, running errands, doing laundry, getting work done, taking advantage of the internet, and trying not to barf over everything as we roll around <laughs> at the duck, so. So I'm up front right now, hoping to get out of the noise of the engine, but we are on the move today. It is a foggy, misty Pacific Northwest morning and we are doing something kind of fun today. So for the very first time, we are having some guests and friends out to Via uh, for lunch. And I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm also like, okay, four people, two dogs, you know, 100 square feet or whatever this is. It's gonna be tweet, but I'm really excited to be able to show our new home uh, to our friends. So I'm looking forward to it. Slippery. And I'm slipping. And I'm slipping. Oh. 